We're going to continue the conversation back home in studio with me, Professor Oeri Tumbo. And we're discussing the way forward for the opposition collision NASA, even as NASA leader Raila Odinga is expected to give a major announcement on the way forward for the opposition. The opposition has remained adamant that the Supreme Court decision to uphold President Uhuru Kenyatta's victory will not deter them from terming his presidency as illegitimate. Well, just this morning, the opposition NASA gave a statement accusing the Jubilee government on crime of crimes against humanity. Well, let's discuss this with Professor Oeri Tumbo here in studio. And uh, part of this statement um, that I have here uh, by the opposition NASA details events that took place when Raila Odinga came back to the country from the US. Uh, there was also details of Sunday killings in Madare and uh, places like Kuruma and uh, Babadogo. And uh, this is just uh, some of what uh, NASA leader Raila Odinga had to say and also making requests uh, for President Uhuru Kenyatta. Some of the key issues that uh, they are talking about is continued police brutality and killing of unarmed protesters and they want the president to stop mass killing of their supporters. Um, are there some of the issues that you say President Uhuru Kenyatta needs to incorporate as the demands or the requests of NASA supporters? Um, in fact he doesn't have to incorporate them because they have been made by NASA. Mm -hmm. First and foremost NASA needs to make an appeal to its supporters all right? Right to stay away from um, uh, what you would call unnecessary demonstrations. Right. And secondly, stay away from participating in certain criminal activities mm -hmm. that would cause uh, concern so that there is a need for police to intervene. Now, the difficulty there is there is that if these supporters do not heed all right, those instructions, then these other demands, in my view, become quote-unquote illegitimate. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. So it's extremely essential that the NASA supporters uh, restrain from involvement in any act that can be interpreted by the security agencies as being... Uh, a total disregard. But, but, but you know, Professor, they, they, yeah. they are accusing uh, the Jubilee government of what they're terming as crimes against humanity. And part of the key issues they say is the killing of unarmed protesters. Um, Their argument being they should not be killed if they were not armed. I am coming. I'm coming to that. Uh -huh. Now, this is the first line of defence right. of saying, "Don't go out there." Now, there is an interesting uh, aspect. When people go out to legitimately demonstrate, mm -hmm. or even participate in this particular one. You take the case when uh, Raila was arriving from the U.S. The US. Mm -hmm. Historically, when, if I may take the, the, the public uh, on, a, on a journey, mm -hmm. when Matima arrived <laughs> from U.K. for treatment after uh, being mistreated by Moi mm -hmm. and his team, the, 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 the way to the airport and the airport itself was open to the public. Right. Going there to welcome a person coming from hospital should not, could not be construed as breaking the law. Mm -hmm. So he was allowed. When Kimaki came from hospital, the same was accorded to him. When Uhuru came from ICC, that was accorded to him. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, as a citizen... I'm almost embarrassed by the conduct of the police in this particular case that they uh, criminalized going to the airport to meet Raila as if Raila, quote-unquote, is a devil. Mm -hmm. In other words, doing devilish things is considered you can take steps to rectify and protect the society. Right. Now, this perception and unwarranted activities without these people having capacity to protect themselves if they are unarmed and they are carrying out an illegal activity. Mm -hmm. Now, this clearly borders, all right, on crimes against, against humanity. humanity. It, and, it borders. And, mm -hmm. In fact, it's up to qualified institutions to make that decision. Now, the most important, the thing I can't understand is why is this obsession with physical destruction 
of people who have a different opinion, even when they are not exercising that opinion. Mm -hmm. In other words, I could be found walking to my house. Eh? Police have this big, ugly truck on the road. They see me passing, and they decide for some reason that they don't like the way I'm walking, mm -hmm. and they shoot me dead. All right. Now, these are the things that Uhuru should contain. My, you know, there is a very thin line. For example, uh, Uhuru, it is an, it, it's common knowledge. Uhuru was accused in ICC, mm -hmm. and they won the case and came back. Now, you can't, when you have come back as an innocent person, you can't tolerate these things, and the people believe that you are innocent even in previous in, in the previous incidents. allegations. All right, so let's, let's bring in then our lawyer and uh, political analyst, Joy Brendam Devo, who joins us from our city center studios. Good to have you this afternoon, Joy. What do you make of this statement by NASA leaders accusing the Jubilee administration and crimes against humanity, especially just borrowing uh, from what Professor Weri Tumbo just said? Hello, Michelle, and hello, Professor. Uh, I would just like to say that first, whenever you have the loss of life, it is very unfortunate. And especially in circumstances that are totally unnecessary. You know, if it was, um, there was a, um, a freak of nature or something that would cause, of life, would cause loss of life, that is one thing. But when it is circumstances where there really ought not to be loss of life, it is very unfortunate. And that is why you see the words being used, crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. There's something that Professor Tumbo said that I want to pick up on. When leaders call out uh, members of the public to come to the street and use language that is likely to cause them to be charged and to be agitated, then when unfortunate clashes happen, Sometimes it becomes very difficult because I put myself in the shoes of that person who has come thinking he is fighting for democracy, he is standing on his ground, he is trying to make a point, and then he's met with a bullet or he's met with a police baton. Such a person, when he comes away from there, he's become hardened and radicalized such that now the bile is no longer even against just some random government. It becomes directed and targeted. And that's what we've been seeing in Kenya. I wish would come to a place where, not just for the government, but also for the politicians to understand that using the masses as political capital is never a good thing. I will not be one to say that it is the government that is solely to blame in this. I think the politicians jointly are to blame for this. Those who use the police excessively and those who repeatedly call on people and charge them to come out. Because if you're coming, for example, let's take the protests that were happening um, against the IEBC. People have already come with this chiloba must go. They have come with coffins and effigies. That crowd is already charged. For there to be trouble, it doesn't take a lot for a spark to come off. Mm -hmm. And I wish would come to a place, even as leaders, would realize using people for political capital is in itself a crime against the very people you want to lead. That's one. Secondly, the, when, if you're talking legally, the, when you're saying crimes against humanity, this is, is a very particular thing. You broke the news just now of uh, the conviction in The Hague of Mladic. This, it was systematic, sustained, and in Kenya right now, that's what we're seeing. We're getting to a place where the tensions are being heightened, it is sustained, it is being propagated by some to be systematic. To me, I'm still thinking it's still a bit random, but we are getting to a place where people are becoming hardened. Time has come for the rhetoric to stop so that the madness can calm down. It's like if you're in a home and you notice your pot is boiling over, you pour a little bit of cold water to tone it down, and that's what we need to do right now. Have we gotten to the state of crime against humanity? I don't think so, that's a bit sensational. But right now where we are is not where we are supposed to be. And it's time for us as a people to also say, look, enough is enough. This turning against brother, turning against sister is not helping anybody. Right. And at the end of the day, the ones who survive this, are the politicians. It's not the masses. Right. Because the masses, right. where do we turn to? Where do we run to? Mm -hmm. But where then, Joy, do we need to be is a question we're asking. Because in the wake of all this, NASA says that uh, the NASA leadership will be announcing um, uh, you know, uh, self-protection measures for their supporters, even as they ask them to exercise restraint uh, so they remain safe. But this doesn't sound like a very uh, long-term solution to all of this. So even as NASA leader, Raila Odinga, is expected to give the way forward for NASA supporters this week, what options do you see Raila Odinga as having, or the opposition rather, as having in solving this? 
I'll, I'll not go into a territory of trying to imagine what would Raila do, because quite frankly, at this point, I think even you have to admit the twists and the turns are becoming so fast, you would be pretentious to imagine that you know what Raila Odinga is going to do next. But one thing that I would hope to hear from our politicians, like for example, when, when we keep hearing, we will tell you what to do next. We will tell you how to go next. We'll tell you what to do next. What that does, it keeps people in that sustained, heightened sense of expectancy, which is what I was talking about earlier. And when you do this with people, what it does, even if they were ready to sort of calm down, they don't because they, they're anticipating the next step. Now the challenge becomes, every time an announcement is made, you're trying to better what you did last time. You're trying to keep within the confines of the law while trying to keep the momentum sustained. Mm -hmm. My question would be, for what adventure? What else are we going for? Is there an election in the offing? No. Is there a regime change in the offing? No. So are we going to do this for the next five years? It's one of those things where I don't even understand for what reason this would be useful now. But like I said, I would not be one to get into, to try and get into the head of the leader of the position or to try and get into the head of the NASA supporters as well. Because at this point in time, everybody is doing what they imagine is right to them. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, I wish the leaders would take the leadership and do what they're supposed to do. If you're in parliament and you're on the opposing side, oppose parliament because that is your platform. If you're in the, in the Senate, be the opposition because that is your platform. If you're in the county assemblies, go on and legislate aggressively for what you want. But acting extrajudicially, at the end of the day, you're not able to sustain any perceived gains because they have no basis in law. Mm -hmm. So it's like writing on the sand. Once the, wave, the tide comes in, it all goes away. But at the end of the day, the people are left holding the ball and counting the losses, which is very unfortunate. All right. And uh, let's listen in to uh, Professor Ori Tumbo here in studio, because uh, at, at the end of it all, many say inclusivity is what we need. The country seemingly divided right down the middle. Uh, but uh, again, in terms of inclusivity, uh, that, that means including some of NASA's demands, even that have been made um, in this statement this morning. But earlier on, you had alluded to the fact that the Supreme Court's decision seemingly vindicated um, you know, an institution like the IEBC uh, for going against the very orders uh, of, of, of the Supreme Court, something that then uh, spikes um, an air of rebellion among the opposition as well, that if an institution like IEBC can defy the Supreme Court and get away with it, then why can't we defy several other court orders and also get away with it? So with that environment already having been created, how do we begin speaking inclusion? First, I want to make a, a comment on what Joy has said in relation to the political leadership and their followers. The statement that the leaders should stop uh, mobilizing their people to do what they're doing. The greatest capital a politician has are people. Now, if you remove people from Uhuru Kenyatta or from Uhuru, uh, right. Raila, they are not worth anything on their own. So what she's saying is theoretically attractive. Practically, it's difficult to, to apply. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when it comes to issues of inclusion, all right, we, in my opinion, devolution has provided, all right, mm -hmm. uh, an appropriate platform for people to, to, could say, realize their dreams through their counties. If they make messes back in their backyard, that's a different issue. But if we could exercise devolution, for example, if, for example, the, the, the government could highlight its achievements in specific counties that are NASA dominated. If we take Mombasa, for example, if you look at the infrastructure development that is going on there, uh, the government is not telling the citizens uh, that this is uh, our contribution and is this, is this not good? Then they will say, well, something is happening. Then the governor can't go on saying the government has done nothing. Mm -hmm. the, the unfortunate thing about the current uh, national government management of the evolution is that they have mixed up uh, their dislike for individuals who happen to be elected mm -hmm. in those areas. Their conflict with those individuals with uh, national interests. For example, 
quite clearly, when you see an argument between the governor of Mombasa and His Excellency the President, it's my understanding that that argument is a, an argument that is um, outside the realm of management of public affairs. Mm -hmm. It probably is involved with fighting for tenders and control of business at the port and things like that. Now, that has contaminated the, the working relationship between the two. When, in fact, if the systems were linked, then the business would go on irrespective of what um, uh, Joho thinks about Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of inclusion, I, I am a big believer that once, like now, um, Uhuru Kenyatta has got the mandate to uh, run uh, matters of state, it's up to him to put together teams of people that are likely to facilitate um, transformation of all these conflicts into areas of agreement. Mm -hmm. And this means, first and foremost, there must be respect. At the moment, there's no respect for government by the opposition. Right. There's no respect by national government for the opposition. And, and, and uh, 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 when you look at that, in my opinion, I want to propose that the president looks for a group of wise men mm -hmm. from the opposition, a group of wise men of these who are acceptable. In other words, if you are to provide a group of wise men who are the age of Oburu Odinga, mm -hmm. but who is not Oburu Odinga, right. and who has credibility, and he's saying, look, we are not inciting violence. We are simply asking for equity. Right. We are asking for inclusion. Then he looks, at, he, he, he looks beyond the cronies he has around mm -hmm. who jump at every opportunity to make senseless statements. And there are very many experienced people in his support yes, group in terms that of would facilitate a, a, a rational discussion for purposes of Mutual respect, respect for the opposition and the national the government. Opposition. And it is something we will be discussing in a bit more detail right here on KTN News Desk. We're speaking to professor, political analyst uh, Professor Ori Tumbo here in studio. We also have lawyer and uh, political analyst uh, Joy Brendam Devo in this conversation, joining us from our city centre studios. Take a short commercial break here on KTN News Desk, but do stay with us. Conversation continues in just a moment.